At this time, we're going to go ahead and pause and go into a time of offering. We just want to continue to say thank you so much for being so faithful in, in your giving. Uh, it's just been just amazing to see and encouraging for us. And um, we just know that the Lord has just continued to pay a pass for us and opening doors for this church. And, and we just want to say thank you. So let's go ahead and pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for another week of online church, Lord, just to join together in person or not in person. Father, we just pray that you use this offering, Lord, for you, for uh, to further your kingdom, Lord, to use it for your glory. We know that you have great plans for it. We praise in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
wanna go deeper, Lord, with you. I just wanna see your face. I pray, Lord, increase my faith. I wanna go deeper, Lord. I wanna go deeper, Lord. I wanna go. Good morning, Journey Family Church. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Um, I'd like to just start with a a Bible verse, if we could. Um, It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So I need some of that guarding right now, so let's go to the Lord in prayer as we begin today. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, Lord, I'm thankful to be here uh, amongst your body, Lord. Um, I pray that uh, this morning we'll bring you glory, Lord. We'll bring you honor, Lord, as we, as we further our knowledge of uh, you, Lord, and your word, Lord. We thank you for it and the power that it has to change our lives this morning, Lord. So help us, help us to concentrate, Lord, on you and your ways this morning. Um, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So on Romans 6, verse 1 through 4, we're going to begin there. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means, Paul says, we died to sin, how can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So that's where we're going to begin today. We're going to begin thinking about this new life. We're going to be thinking about this death to sin. And I kind of remember Michelle last, last week um, making the comment that she can hardly go a day without sinning. And I kind of chuckled, you know, because um, we live there. Um, So I'm going to begin this morning with a story. And if you didn't know, I've dabbled in pottery for nearly 20 years now. Um, I'm not as good as I should be because I take a year off like every year. So um, my pottery wheel recently broke down and we ordered the parts to fix it. And when it was fixed, then I started getting back into it again. I'm making a few things here and there. And my youngest son, Elliot, um, has shown interest in pottery. And so um, after church one Sunday, we decided we'd go down and make a couple things. As we got downstairs, I had these two balls of clay pounded out and ready to go. And I said, son, I'll go first. Um, I'll show you some things and remind you of some things. Um, so that when you sit down at the wheel, then you'll have an easier time, hopefully. And he agreed. He's very excited. I don't know if you know Elliot or not. Um, Very interested in it. And so I sat down at the wheel, and he took his seat right there. And I said, son, there's a few things that that we do as pottery guys. We we set up on the wheel, and we, we take the clay, and we... We, we smacked the clay on the wheel. And so, and so that's what I did. 
And he kind of liked that part, you know. And, and then as I, as I described to him what I was going to do, and then I would take um, and stop talking and then do what I said I was going to do. And so I said, okay, son, so, so we push in on the clay and, and it cones up and then we push down, okay? And he said, yeah, okay. So I, I took water and I, I got the clay wet and, it, and then I was quiet. And I'm pushing in and the cone comes up and then I push down. And he's, he's very, very uh, talkative at this point. Um, and, and I remind him, son, Let's just be quiet and, and watch and learn. And he said, okay. So I said, next thing you do is you, you make a dome out of it, and, and then you put a hole in it. And I'll show you how to do that now. And so as I was, as I was nice and quiet, he starts talking again. Well, you know, this and that and the other thing. And I said, Elliot, um, it's hard to concentrate all, all the time when somebody's talking. And he says, sorry, sorry, sorry. So then comes the part where, where you literally raise the vessel up and, and give it height. Uh, and I said, now this part's very, very um, difficult, and I, I'm, I'm going to need to concentrate. And he, he said, yes. So as I start um, raising the vessel up, he, he starts talking again. And now he's reaching into my, my pottery toolkit here, and and I lose concentration. And um, as the Bible says in Jeremiah 18, verse 4, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Right? So I knew, being an experienced potter, that it was insurmountable at this point. And I looked at him, and he knew that there was issues as well. Um, and something happened in my heart. You know, all the, all the warning that, that um, I needed to be quiet and concentrate, um, it kind of upset me. I became uh, frustrated. I became even, even angry. And I took that clay and I squeezed in and down with an anger in my heart. And I ripped it, ripped it clean off the wheel. And without even looking, I, I tossed it over onto the burlap. And I reached over and I washed my hands. And it was silent now. And I, I looked up at my son and tears began to flow down his face. And the silence was replaced with crying. And I, instantly I felt remorse and regret. And I motioned him over, and he didn't want to come over. And he finally came over. And I said, son, I'm sorry. And he said, it's okay, Dad, I forgive you. Instant forgiveness shown by a child. Matthew 19, verse 13, it says, Then little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. Have you ever wondered why Jesus said that? Well, I think for one, children forgive. And adults, man, we, we struggle, right? Right? So I was going to look at uh, Matthew 18, verse 21. It's a parable. And the parable starts like this. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother? Up to seven times? 
And Jesus said, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. And as the footnote of my Bible says, 70 times seven. Right? So, so we're to forgive like a child over and over and over and over again. And as a parable continues in verse 23, it says, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. Right? That's all of us. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents, that's like a couple million dollars, was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he, his wife, and his children, and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. Then the servant fell on his knees. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. That's forgiveness, right? Like a child. So I brought that piece this morning. It sat there for a couple of weeks. And I saw it sitting there. Man. And I want you to know something this morning. I am not a good Christian. I, I do many things that a Christian does. Right? I pray. I read my Bible. I go to church. I tithe. I serve. I believe Jesus is the Son of God who came to earth to take my sins away. But I'm not a good Christian. The older I get, the more I realize there's really no such thing as a good Christian. There are Christians, plain and simple. We try to be good, but we're really broken. So let me show you what I mean. Um, this pottery thing was Sunday. And on Tuesday, I was at work. I had my, my earbud in. I was listening to some news, some politics, and, and I heard a startling fact. Um, it said that a thousand black babies are aborted every day in the United States of America. We now have more abortion deaths than COVID deaths in the same period of time. And I heard this at work, and I thought, man, I'm going to share that with one of my coworkers, you know. I share things of the Lord with them. I don't know. Um, I just felt this laid on my heart to share it with them. And so I wandered over to them, and I said, Neil, do you have any idea how many black babies are aborted every day in the United States? He stopped what he was doing. He turned and he looked at me and he said, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to know. You don't want to hear it. You know? He went back to what he was doing and man, I, I, I awkwardly stood there for for probably too long, just like. So it's ironic, isn't it? Here's a guy at work basically saying the exact same thing to me that I said to my son two days before. I don't want to hear it, he said. I'm too busy, I'm too wrapped up. I don't want to hear it. So I was, honestly, I was stunned, I was hurt. I walked back to my station and I thought, maybe I don't want to hear what you have to say anymore. My heart went from open to closed. Minutes turned into hours. And then at the end of the day, I knew that I was holding the grudge.
So good Christian. So let's, let's go back to our parable, the second half of the parallel parable. I'll start at verse 26 to give you a reminder of what we've seen. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me. He begged and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him go. But then that same servant went out and he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. It's like a couple bucks. And he grabbed him and he began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and he begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. The exact same words. But he refused. Instead, he went off and he had the man thrown into prison until he could pay back the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant. He said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servants just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. Jesus said, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. It's amazing to me that in the span of two days, God showed me that we very often stand on two sides of the same coin, right? Here I have messing up, sinning, and being shown how forgiveness is supposed to work. And then two days later, messing up and sinning by not showing that same forgiveness. It's crazy. So that was Tuesday. The Tuesday night came, and I went to prayer night. And after prayer night was uh, wrapped up, Pastor Gary signaled me over. And I walked over there, and he said, hey, what are you doing uh, November 15th? And I was like, that's hunting day, man. I thought he's going to ask me to go hunting. And I said, nothing, why? He goes, will you preach? (laughs) Will I preach? Yeah, at this point, look, my lips said, yeah. That'd be great. But my heart said, no. And it wasn't because of hunting, right? It was because of this, this thing in my heart, this, this thorn in my heart here. And so, so uh, I came home that night, and to be honest with you, I tossed and turned, struggling to sleep and praying. Oh, man. Have you ever spent the night praying? Man. Calling on God for a word for today. And the next day came. I went to work. Would you know it? Didn't say a, a word to my friend Neil. Came home that night. Struggled to sleep again. Praying the whole time. And, and then something happened. I really began to be convicted by it. By this sin in, in my heart. I woke up Thursday morning before work. I got in the shower. And again, um, I'm praying. I shut off the shower. I grab my towel and I put the towel over my head. And I called out to the Lord, Lord, give me a word, Lord. And if you didn't think I was weird before, this is going to confirm it for you. I took the towel off my head and I look across the bathroom and on the back of the toilet is an open box of Cheez-Its. And I really believe that God whispered, I gotta be careful how I say this because people are gonna think, yeah, God whispered through the box of (laughs) Cheez-Its. That's not quite true. God whispered to me about the box of Cheez-Its here. And here's, here's what it is. 
In your everyday, ordinary, average box of Cheez-Its is Cheez-Its, right? And Pastor Gary's going to love this. In your everyday, ordinary, average box of Pop-Tarts is Pop-Tarts. And here's the part. In your everyday, ordinary, average Christian is Christ if you're walking in the Spirit. In your everyday, ordinary, average Christian is lack if you're walking in the flesh. See, in Christ, we were shown that everything in Christ, everything that came out of Christ was Christ, was perfect, right? It says in Colossians 2, verse 9, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It's just not so with us when we live in the flesh. That moment with Elliot, that moment when I reacted to Neil, those are me operating in the flesh. But Colossians 2, verse 10 says, And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. This is the new life we're talking about. In Christ, dead to sin. You see, the harder we try to be good, the more we realize it's impossible. Amy Grant song. I don't know if you go back that far, but I do. The more I try to be the best, the more I get the worst. And I realize the good in me is only there because of who you are, right? Who God is. So we're going to look now at uh, Romans 7, verse 21. Paul writes, So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. Right? My soul delights in God's law. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging a war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of of the law of sin at work within my members. Right? Constant battle here. And Paul says, what a wretched man I am. What a wretched man I am. Have you ever said that to yourself? I encourage you to say that today. I encourage you to say that to yourself right now. I encourage you to say that to God right now. What a wretched man or woman I am. You think of all the, the sins that you've committed against God, against man. You think of all those you've disappointed. You think of all those that you've hurt, that you showed hatred or anger to. Think of all those people that you've said, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear what you have to say. You should say it with me. What a wretched man I am. See, many people will not come that far. We know people like that. They won't admit sin. They won't admit the mistakes that they've made or they won't admit that they're powerless to do anything about it. But God, see, God made us a way to know this inward struggle is a direct indicator that we are spiritually alive. This tug of war that we're feeling this battle is proof that we are becoming children of God. So it looks like uh, the word is repentance this morning. Repentance for the sinner. If you've, never, um, if you've never opened your heart to God, if this is your first time ever hearing the gospel message, um, I encourage you. What a wretched man I am. 
Repentance for the saint, right? For Christians. This needs to be daily. We forget. We, we become okay with sin. It's not okay. Right? Walking in flesh is not okay. Back in the day, things looked a lot different. Repentance looked like this. Right? Sackcloth. So people would, would put on this outward garment. They would roll in ashes. And that would be a show to their fellow man that their heart was calling out to God. But what does Jesus want this morning from us? We find in Joel, verse 2, 12 and 13, Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Right? Can we... Can we open up our hearts to God? Verse 13 says, rend your heart and not your garments, right? Rend your heart. Rip your heart. Tear your heart. And and return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. In Matthew 11, verse 29, it says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. This is Jesus talking. Jesus says, For I am humble, or gentle, and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. So I'd like to finish uh, today by talking at a couple ifs. In Romans 8, verse 13, it says, For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. Right? The wages of sin is death. Um, but if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. Here's another if. In John 14, verse 15, I just love how Jesus leaves it up to us this morning. John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's up to you. If you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. In Luke 9, 23, it says, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. If you desire to come after Jesus, you just deny yourself. And, and yourself, that's talking about the flesh. All right, so there's, there's this battle, and we're, we're fighting it every day. And it's up to you whether you want to participate in the battle or just cave and follow the enemy, right? I encourage you today to know that you're in a battle. I encourage you today to put on your armor and choose the Lord. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for this time together, Lord, that um, your word is strong, Lord. Your word is alive. Lord, your word is good. Lord, help us each to look deep in our hearts, Lord, to see the insufficiencies, Lord, to see the sin against you, against our fellow men, Lord. Help us to to open our hearts, to tear our hearts, Lord, to rend our hearts this morning, Lord, and call on your holy name. Lord, we thank you for this time. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay.